Jonathan Munoz again for another important question during interviews and the question is about tell me about an interesting case you had and please you have to have one you have to have one or two and uh, it doesn't have to be a super crazy weird rare case it has to be a case that you know very well that it really when you talk about it it shows your your fascination your interest um, that it really impacted your life or changed you somehow or really taught you something that is important for for a resident for a doctor and what is important for us um, when we evaluate students students residents um, it's important for us to know that you know the basics that you you do a physical exam that uh, you don't really you don't um, take sign out from others as the the hundred percent truth on this patient but you try to create your own differential diagnosis and make sure that there's not something else that you have covered everything else that could be the reason for this patient being hospitalized so I'm going to tell you about this case I just admitted three days ago. I'm doing nights this week, and it's uh, basically um, uh, as an inter internal medicine or FP hospitalist, um, from time to time you have to work nights. And it's um, I'm in a hybrid program that I do days and nights here and there. So during nighttime, I don't follow patients. I only do admissions. And it's very fast-paced and you have to, to look out for what is going to kill this patient right now, treat it until the morning thing comes and takes over you, and you can go home at 7 a.m. So, uh, three days ago, I got a call from the emergency department, the emergency department, about a patient who only has history of diabetes and hypertension and was brought into the hospital because had a one episode of seizures like movements with loss of consciousness and um, alter after that post ictal right post ictal and so the physician the ear physician did uh, see this kind of the head negative blood work is slightly elevated white blood cell count to 14 Procalcitonin is negative, and we use a lot of procalcitonin to determine between bacterial and viral. I know it's supposed to only be for um, pneumonia, but we use it a lot here to try to make, a, a, you know, help us determine this. Um, then every, everything else was unremarkable. Uh, electrolytes was uh, electrolytes were um, pretty normal. So the the ER physician just signed out to me, hey. Uh, I have this patient here, young, has only diabetes and hypertension, and he comes alter. The wife said that she she saw him having one episode of seizures, um, but he's back to baseline now. So I want to admit him, listen to this, I want to admit him to rule out new onset CVA, new onset seizure, and uh, possible meningitis. So all these three things. And... I said, okay, thank you, uh, go, going to admit the patient, right? Um, so first thing I noticed when, when I get in there, the patient was confused, still confused. And he had a, an arm uh, a sling. His arm was in a sling, and he was on severe pain on that elbow. Um, and he, you couldn't even touch that elbow. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't swollen, it wasn't uh, red or, or with pus or any abscesses. It was just tender. And, of course, he couldn't give me more information, uh, and I just had what the ear physician said. So I called the, the, the wife, and the wife said, well, yes, he, he did have uh, what seems to be a seizure and was very uh, disoriented after that. I said, oh, okay, post ictal, so it seems like he had a seizure. Okay, um, what else happened during this week, right? Like, why, why would he be having seizures? Did he hit his head? Did he have a fall? Did he uh, have a fever? Um, what drugs, anything new, something. And the wife said, well, the only thing is uh, that he had a fall a week ago 
and since then uh, he has been taking Percocets every day because the pain on the elbow, which is not fractured, uh, was very bad and he had to recur to, to Percocet. So for the last two days, she said, he ran out of Percocets and he couldn't get a hold of the primary care doctor to get a refill. So for the last two days, he was just taking ibuprofen. That's the only thing she said. I was, oh, that's not the only thing. That's the, the thing that's causing this. And so by, by all this time, the the the, um, the ER physician already, he signed off and he's done with the patient. But remember, the ER physician, it's a, a person that has to see so many patients in a very little amount of time. And so sometimes, sometimes, some of them, uh, and depending how busy the day was, um, they really don't have time to, to look into a very big, into getting a, a big story, a, a very concise or precise story. They give you the basics and you take over to, so for you to define. So their sign out is not 100% accurate. They cover the big things. If they have to intubate, they will intubate. If they have to uh, put a central line, they do that. But it's your job to look into the details. And it's, that's what I did. So in my mind, I was very big on, okay, so this patient could be going through opiates withdrawals. And it matched the time he was take, stopped taking it two days ago. So I think this is opiate withdrawals. I had to give him a dose of morphine for, for his elbow pain. And he, puff, back to baseline. But... It doesn't end there because this patient is already, someone already said, uh, I'm concerned for a stroke. So you still have to go through the path of making sure this is not a stroke. So I still had to consult neurology and discuss with the neurology, you know, hey, um, the, the initial thought on the ER was that this patient had a stroke or could have um, meningitis or new um, or new onset seizure disorder. So we, I talked to him a little more and he was taking this Percocet and he stopped it two days ago. So I think he's going through withdrawal. The seizures are secondary to withdrawal from opiates. And he said, that's very likely, that's very likely, but look at the uh, white blood cell count and, and his confusion. Um, so monitor him for 24 hours. If he doesn't spike a fever and he's back to baseline, meningitis is very unlikely. Also, the procalcitonin is negative. Yeah, okay, no lactic acid elevation. Okay, so very unlikely to be meningitis. No, no Kernick, no Brudzinski, nothing like that. Um, and already back to baseline after morphine. So, okay, so very likely, very unlikely meningitis. So cancel your order for lumbar puncture. No more lumbar puncture. Uh, what about the stroke? Um, it is still possible. It's very, still, uh, very likely uh, sometimes to get a negative CT scan initially. And the MRI is always, if someone said um, a stroke, you have to go the, down the path, down the path, CT scan, MRI, unless the patient goes back to normal, to baseline. So this patient went back to baseline. So the neurologist said, okay, keep an eye on him 24 hours. If he doesn't have any focal deficits, then you don't need the MRI. Um, we assume it's a seizure from opiates. Okay. Perfect. Now, new onset tissue disorder, epilepsy. Um, the neurologist said, well, very unlikely he, uh, at this age, to develop a, a new tissue disorder, let's do an EEG. We did an EEG and no abnormalities. So the, the diagnosis of epilepsy and, and new tissue disorder was, uh, this con uh, was ruled out. So... With improvement, noticeable improvement, and being back normal, uh, we thought, okay, open withdrawals and send back home, discharge the next day after 24 hours monitoring. So what I learned from this case, what I learned from this case, or not not learned because I already uh, I've been practicing for seven years. So what I it, this case remind me was first, do not let others. Um, give you uh, or dictate your, your thought processing. So you yourself have to go assess the patient, create your own differential diagnosis, follow your systematic approach, and 
diagnose this patient, investigate more. So what, what I was reminded is not only that, but looking into the details, taking time to talk to family members, to people that have been with this patient, may give you the information that you need to avoid all what I avoided, like lumbar puncture, MRIs, that is not, that's not needed. And if a student tells me that, I will be very, very surprised. I will be like, wow, man, this, this, this is great. I, I love um, that you were able to catch that. I'm, I'm very impressed. So it doesn't need to be a, a, a big case for you to, um, to mention during the interview. It has to be something that is meaningful. And it has to be something that at the end of this conversation, you said you, you learned something, what you learn, like I learned, I, remi I was reminded of, you know, systematic approach and, and the, the consideration of opioid withdrawals. It's a big thing in the United States, or, um, opioid dependency. So things like that, things like that. Don't try, to, don't try to, to find a weird case that you did once or that you saw during your observerships. It's not about the weirdness or the rareness. It's about the uh, lesson learned. All right. Thank you.